Hello everyone and welcome back for episode 3 in our shopkeeper uh, system series. Previously we have got our shopkeeper into our level and we got this sort of transition into the shopkeeper UI. In this episode we're going to work on creating the items and then the item slots to appear in our shopkeeper UI and that starts populating there. So the first thing we're going to do is work on our shopkeeper UI. So for this we need to make a shopkeeper slot uh, for each item. So we'll make that a separate widget. And the reason why you want to make it a separate widget is because it's going to be duplicated over and over again. So rather than us remake the same object over and over again by hand, we just make it once and then create instances of that inside our main UI. So I'm going to call this one shopkeeper item underscore UI. And in here, we are going to design our uh, item slots that are going to appear in the shop. So I'm going to delete this canvas panel because we don't need absolute positioning. And I'm going to use a vertical box to get started off. This vertical box is going to store items inside of it vertically. So I'm going to add a text. Then I'm going to add a button. I'm oh, sorry, not button, a size box. Let's do a size box first. A uh, size box and then a, another bit of text. The size box, we're going to click on it and on the left uh, right hand side we can change its width and height override. So on its width and height I'm going to type in 128. To see this effect and desired sizes in the window just go to the where it says fill screen at the top right and change this to desired. Now you can see what it's going to look like in the actual uh, game. With our vertical box and our text blocks, this combined is going to create our item slot. The size box though has nothing in it, it's just an empty panel. So let's put a button in it. And on my button, I'm going to go onto the right hand side and I'm going to change its normal to be of a uh, grey coloured. So we are going to tint, let me make that grey like so. And let's make this a 0.6 opacity. Then I'm going to go into the hovered and change the tint to a green like so and again put this to 0.6 OK. So that will now change the colour to green when it's hovered over by the mouse or cursor. Okay, so this these text, the first to, uh, top text is going to be the title of the item. So we're going to select that and change the size of it to a nice, more manageable size 12. And I'm going to center align it in the justification. I'm going to do exactly the same for the bottom one as well. The bottom one is going to be the cost of each item. So I, that will appear at the bottom there and the title will appear at the top. Inside our button, we're going to put an image and that will be the thumbnail of our item. So I'll drag the image on top of a button and it now puts the image inside of the button. Image, with it selected, we're going to change image size to match our button, so 128 and 128. Changing our padding for this to be even across the board, I'm going to type in 5. Like so. And this will do for now. We'll be returning to this down the line when we are adding code, but for now this will do just fine. We're going to click Compile and close that down and go into our shopkeeper UI. Now on here we're going to create a grid to display a series of eight items that can be uh, for, for sale. So we're going to use a uniform grid panel to accomplish this. Now I'm not going to worry about sizing it because it's going to auto size based on its content. To make sure that happens go to the right hand side and tick on size to content. It will shrink right down, that's because it is small. Now, the long way is to drag in your shopkeep items uh, slots into your uniform grid. And once you add one, you position it using these arrows here. And we could do that for all eight. However, that will get very, very messy and long-winded overall. What would be far better is to create a more dynamic system that will do it for us. 
and this will help us later on when we add uh, multiple pages to our shopkeeper UI. So I'm going to remove these three I've just added. And then on the uh, graph here, I'm going to, first of all, we need to go back to our uniform grid panel and actually name it and give it a, a make it is variable. So I'm going to name this one item grid and take the a tick the is variable button. And we're going to go to the graph and we should now see the item grid as a variable on the left hand side there. So we're looking for the on construct or event construct event. So I'm going to remove these other two. And on event construct, that is going to then uh, fill up our item grid with the various items. So drag your item grid out and choose get. Now in here, we're going to add children to this. So we're going to create widgets for that. So click create widgets. Like so. So this will create a widget. And if I change the class here to my shopkeeper item, it will create a shopkeeper item slot like we just made. And we want to add it to the item grid. So take the return value here and item grid here. And we're going to add that return value to the item grid. The easiest way of doing that is to drag from your item grid pin and go add child to uniform grid. Hooking up the pins as such. Now, once it's part of the uh, grid, we then want to make it uh, have a certain slot value that includes like its row and its column. So on the return value, we can go set row. And I'll leave it blank for now. And also do set column from the same return value. These require integers. Now the way we're going to do this is using a for loop to calculate these for us. So before we get our create widget up and after the event construct, we can put in a for loop. So we go for loop. And with the for loop, we're going to do the first index at zero and the last index at seven. We're going to use the index here to calculate our row and column. So drag your index down and divide it by another integer. An integer we're going to use is the number of total slots that we have in each row. So that will be four per row. So if I type in four here, that's going to give us a value which we can plug into in row. So for example, if the first index is three, three divided by four is going to give us a zero because it gives us a whole number. So we'll round down to zero. That zero will put us into the zero row, which is the first row. If the index is say five, five divided by four will get us one and one will get us into the second row, the row one. Now to calculate the set column, we're going to take the index out and modulo it with the percentage sign. And modulo returns us the remainder. And we want to get the remainder of it divided by, again, the width of the uh, of the columns. So there'll be four for that, four columns available. And that will go into the in column. So for example, if it's zero, zero would get us row zero which we've already discussed but if 0 modulo 4 it would turn the remainder and 0 modulo 4 is 0 so it gets the first column if it's 1 1 modulo 4 is 1 and so forth if it's 7 7 modulo 4 equals 3 giving us the final column and so on and so forth and that is kind of it this all should create our grid for us in the game so we can test this out uh, by closing it and pushing play and we could walk into our inventory and you can see our slots are all appearing for us here. Now I'm going to space these up a, a bit more so they're not all bunched up. To do that, go into Shopkeeper UI and click on your item grid uh, component. And over here you'll see slot padding. I'm going to add in 20 for slot padding. So now when I push play, they should be a bit more spaced apart, like so. Perfect. So obviously these are blank, they don't have any items in it yet, um, which we're going to add in a moment. 
So the way it's going to work is we're going to have like a, a, a inventory of all the items inside the game, and we're going to give an inventory to the shopkeeper. The shopkeeper then will spit out his inventory through this list as such. So first thing we need to do is create an item. So I'm going to create a new folder here and just call it items like so. So create our items, we're going to create a data table storing all the various items inside the game. So before we do that, we have to create the structure for this. So I'm going to go into our blueprint section and choose structure and it's going to be called item structure. Open this up and here we want to put in all the various values for our uh, item. So in this case, I just need the name and that'll be some text. If able, cost, and that'll be integer. Another variable for a thumbnail, and that's going to be a texture 2D. So this is storing um, a, a collection of variables. That's what structures do. They, it's a collection of variables um, that belong to one item. In this case, an, an actual item, a name of it, a cost of it, a thumbnail. Now, if you're using this item for elsewhere in the game, such as the player's inventory or actually being usable, you could associate a mesh, you could associate an actor for this, you can associate a description. You basically put in whatever details you want for your item in here. But for this purpose of this uh, series, we just need these three things. So I'm going to click Save and close this. Now we've got our structure in place, we can create a data table. So right click, miscellaneous, and choose data table. You'll get a drop down box and it's going to ask you to choose a structure to build the rows out. So from there, choose your item structure and click OK. And I'm going to call this one item data table. Open this up and we've got a blank data table. On the row editor, I can go and click plus to add new row. And here I can enter the details. I can name the row and in this case, I'm going to name them with an ID number of one to get our first item. Name of our first item will be an apple. The cost of it will be 20. And the thumbnail will be a thumbnail that I'll find later on, but for now we can leave it as none. I'm going to add another row. This row is, called, is number two. Name of this is going to be gunpowder. And it's going to cost 50. I'm going to go another new row. Item number ID 3, and this is going to be uh, let's do pumpkin because it's nearly Halloween at time of recording, so we'll do pumpkin and give it a, uh, a price of 120. So you build up a whole list of all the items you're going to have in your game, okay? Fill out the details for each one as you go. Click save and close that. You can always add more to it, you can always go back and keep adding more if you like. That's totally down to you. So now I've got an item data table up. We can now use that to build out our slots. So I'm going to go back to my slot that I made at the start of this video. I'm going to open this up and you can see it's blank. We're going to fill out these various details with that slot uh, information from the item. So if I go to my graph and give it a variable of item ID number and let's choose that as an integer. I want to tick on also instance editable and expose on spawn and click compile. So on the event construct, we're going to use this uh, item number to get an item from that data table. So on the event construct, we're going to grab this item ID, choose get, and then from there, we're going to use a get a data table reference. So if I type in data table, and find the get data table uh, get data table row, sorry, at the bottom, and plug it into the construct. We can choose a data table from our list. We're going to choose the only one that should be there, so our item data table. And you've got row name 123. Now I want that to associate itself to this item ID number I've got here. So I can convert that to a, t uh, a string. So find two string. 
and then drag that into row name and it'll convert it into a name and click compile now you could put item id as a uh, as a name variable uh, however or uh, or text whatever you want to do but i chose a number because i want the player to uh, the game designers to realize that there's a number they have to put into that okay so we handle the conversion at this end now what that's going to do is going to spit out whether or not it found a row if it did find a row it's also going to find out the information from that okay so on row found uh, we're going to store the table item structure table here as item structure or let's call it item details and the type for this would be item structure like so and we're going to choose set and that's going to plug into out row from our get data table row found will plug into that set so it triggers it if it's found a row so once it's found that and set those details in place um, we've got that stored so we can do stuff with it later on no problem uh, but for now we're just going to tell it to change the text blocks here and here based on those item details so on this top text block I'm going to rename this block um, item name and tick the is variable box and the bottom one is going to be the cost so cost and is variable again ticked on go to your graph drag out the item name and choose get and from there we can go set text and to find the text we want to use we can right click on item details here and split this you can see name can go into it directly so now we're going to do cost drag your cost variable out and choose get and again we're going to do set text plug that in and the in text for this is going to be the cost value coming out of here but going into a, um, a, a text format so the reason why I want to do that is because I want to tell the player how much, what currency it's going to be in so if I change that to um, format text and I can type in here a curly bracket and put in cost and then close curly bracket and I can then type in whatever I want afterwards so like gold and hit enter it will now put in that cost so whatever I typed into my curly brackets will now appear as a variable input parameter on our format text that can now be our cost value into there like so so that's going to put the cost and then put in a space then gold into our set text so I'm going to click compile and we're going to close that so basically what is going to happen is on the shopkeeper UI in a graph you can see when you create shopkeeper UI we've got item number available to us here item ID is going to be basic zero by default now when we have our inventory for our shopkeeper available to us in the next episode we are plugging that into our item ID here to show various items that the, uh, the character has but for testing purposes I'm just going to type in one into my item ID and that should get us the apple item from our data table and that will be for all the items so just so you're clear I'm going to click play and we're going to go over to our character and you see apple and 20 gold for all of them okay and that is it for this episode in this episode we covered how to create item slots the item data and add in those dynamically to our shopkeeper ui in the next episode we're going to work on the inventory for our shopkeeper so we can tell it what items it has available to sell um, to the player Thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions about this series or any of my videos, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to make sure you catch the next, next episode as it's released. If you want to watch that next episode right now, you can head to patreon.com forward slash Rylaley and you can see that video right now for at least $1. There are many videos available on Patreon, so please do check them out, as well as our Discord channel and many other benefits. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.